Hello, brothers and sisters. Many people do not understand what the living word is. God confused people's languages after the Tower of Babel, but there is a constant, the laws of nature that God created, the way he made things, and the way they're supposed to function. Although the enemy is trying to utilize science, unrighteously using humans to enslave one another, using scientism, and possibly trying to change the laws of nature using CERN. Actions speak louder than words. This is why Christ's journey to the cross saved so many people. It wasn't just the action of doing so, but the spiritual and emotional implications of laying down your life for a loved one so they might change their actions and ways of life. A literal living legacy that produces the same results generation after generation through his memorialized love. Now, if you love someone and give them grace and mercy instead of continuously hitting them or prodding them like cattle, a lot of people will give you credence and be thankful. But if they keep being wicked, you either withdraw your support or punish them. Just telling people what to do never did much of anything. That's why God came in the flesh and came and lived a perfect, sinless life instead of becoming a hypocrite, the spotless lamb, the perfect role model. God didn't just create everything and then let it all go out of disorder. Just because people abuse free will and do evil things doesn't mean God meant for it to happen like when Adam and Eve rebelled in the Garden of Eden. God's intention is to bring people to his life. He even makes fruits that are easy to digest like bananas, easy to peel and shaped perfectly to fit into people's mouths. They're even soft to chew even if you don't have teeth. God never intended them to become a symbol for a penis. That was a wicked, perverted lie created by Satan. The world's leaders today only tell people what to do just so they can stay in power. They send what they call peacekeepers to put people in line when there's dissent, just like the movie A Bug's Life, the spiritual locusts talked about in Revelation. The moral of the story is, you can have all the answers, but if you don't implement them, then you are not righteous, especially provided that you didn't make the problems in the first place, just so you can lord over people and get some attention. You can either command people what to do using brute force, or to be loving and give them a choice with free will. You see, words can be written down on a piece of paper to give people directives. You can either get God's word from the Bible or read false news printed in newspapers and follow evil people they put pictures of in magazines, or people can be told what to do like a dictator barking orders. MAGA, M-A-G-A, is the highest title in the Church of Satan, meaning magician. The synagogue of Satan wearing red hats with the name Trump like a mark on their forehead. Red hat backwards is hat plus red, meaning hat red or hatred. Like America fighting against the monarchy, the redcoats are coming. Actions do speak louder than words. If you don't follow up with the things that you say, then you're actually speaking bold-faced lies instead of Christ's letters written in the Bible written in red. Unlike bold italics used on headers of newspapers like the New York Times, feeding people conspiracy theories or partial truths. Not to be confused with actual conspiracy, which means people colluding behind closed doors conspiring to lie to the masses just to keep their way of life. For more for them, less for you, you know, just like those secret societies and brotherhoods following Satan's spiritual cherub covering stemming from ancient rulers that turned into the monarchy. There's stonemason lodges in almost every city in the world, and that's the truth. Go look it up if you think I'm lying. If you haven't noticed, almost all these headlines are negative nowadays. Instead of giving people good news, it's a ritual. This is just like Christ's salvation through Yeshua called Jesus. No matter how old or wise or ignorant you are, even if you're a young child, the Lord's salvation can be easily accepted, but unless you're watching and learning, God's people die for lack of knowledge. When you don't know the right things God wants, he delivers his chastisement, and it gets worse and worse if you don't repent. Seven times seven. There are even people who are partially brain dead, blind, or illiterate that spread the gospel and edify the church. But if you don't, then you're a wicked servant. That's what Christ says, don't hate on this servant. There's people that say you can't do works to be saved, but their demons make them go as far as saying that if you do works after salvation, you're not really saved. Essentially, they're telling people to shut up, sit down, and do nothing. The Lord rebuke you, Satan.
I've seen people that are disabled speaking God's word. So what's your excuse? Or were you just enjoying everything God made around you too much to notice? One time, a party girl got in my cab. She said her boyfriend tried to rape her, and she fell off a ledge trying to get away like Humpty Dumpty then hit her head. She developed temporary dementia, and I could tell it was pretty bad, and it made me feel sad. I tried to give her the gospel, stating that if she accepted the Lord and went to the church right next to her house, he would heal her miraculously even that same very day. I could tell she tried to process the information, even though the message went past her mind and into the spirit, but she wouldn't accept Christ due to her prior way of life and convictions. Even spiritually, she still denied him, the walking dead. The demons inside of her got mad, and she got out of my car as fast as she could, and she ran away. Sometimes, no matter what we say, no matter the person's situation, it's up to them to accept him, but that's only if God sees their heart and knows that they're ready. Only God can allow you to access him in the first place, but that's dependent on if you're actually willing. A lot of people think they accept him just because they're brought up that way, or they earned a formal degree in biblical study. Sadly, those kind of contemptuous people are being utilized by the devil for evil most of the time because they think they know better than those God teaches directly. God humbles the proud, using people of his choosing. Many people are called, but few are chosen. God did this on purpose, unlike the lies placed into the show, The Chosen. It's a testament of faith, but the devil tries to turn it into some twisted puzzle of facts based off of lies or a demonic game of jumping through hoops of fire or a multiple test like a game. But the test of life is not a game. It's a yes or no answer based on God's question of whether or not you will accept his son, his way, and your commitment to him. I know it's cliche and based off of Noah's flood, but come hell or high water is the demonic saying, though God stills the waters and splits the Red Sea. Pride is the sin of valuing yourself like your own God instead of loving everyone around you, or favoring your own family in favor of others called nepotism. Some people love their own children, but take advantage of other children to be used as their slaves. Christ loved his enemy, giving everyone a chance even though they abuse their God-given freedom. Now that's a bold move, a true ambassador. We're supposed to take care of one another in mutual symbiosis and help people out that don't know the truth or have lost their way, instead of working with the demons like the comic books and movie Venom. The greatest gift God gave is free will, so we could be able to accept him freely instead of being like robots. So the devil weaponized free will by making people follow him instead of God, either freely or by force by trying to turn people into robots. Now, it's not God's prophets or his servants that are trying to put brain chips in people, but the Antichrist and his false prophet. The enemy doesn't care about the unsaved. He cares about tricking the actual Christians that accept Christ into believing in him, like when the devil charmed a snake to lie to Eve in the Garden of Eden. Those that spiritually deny Christ took up arms when Trump started Operation Warp Speed, stinging locusts that confess Christ with their lips, but their hearts are far from him, heartless. Abaddon from New York, Revelation 9-11. Our founding fathers were all... Masons. America was established under the guise of patriotism, under God, the false god Satan preaching freedom, but the truth is far from it. If you're a proud American, you've fallen for the fallen angel Satan, the copper snake on a stick, like the androgynous copper Statue of Liberty in New York. Christ is not of this world. He doesn't owe allegiance to any Babylonian country or multitude of different spoken languages. Don't bow to false sun god worship like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego by Nebuchadnezzar's statue. The last trump wears orange bronzer, mocking God's legs that are like burnished bronze. An American idolized in gold, with feet of clay mixed with iron. But God's rock of salvation will crush them, just as the Lord stated in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Solomon said that he collected gold um, in um, 660 and 6. That's the name of the beast, the Antichrist. And what does Trump love? He loves gold. God said he made us out of clay, and how beautiful are the feet of God's messengers, quick to share God's good news. But when mixed with iron, it becomes mindless, salt that has lost its flavor like Lot's wife being trampled underneath.
God made us in his image, but if we don't listen, we're like a lifeless idol, an empty lamp like Disney Aladdin, four evil spirits called genies, their demonic Nephilim genetics to occupy. Living puppets with souls that only operate born into bondage called sin nature and are filled with the world of lies from outside stimulus called nurture. Shaped by the world we're born in, not reborn in his Holy Spirit. Some ask, how can God also be a human? God is all of creation and we're living inside of him. Our flesh bodies are physical creation by him and a vessel for him to live inside, to live with and to function with us inside like um, a wife sharing um, the flesh with their husband in two separate locations. We are also part of God's living word, his children. The Lord rebuke you, deaf and dumb spirits. Wake up and repent before it's too late. Don't just keep smelling coffee and roses before you end up in a coffin. God made something called the golden ratio based off his body when he made creation. A head, two arms, two legs, uh, and feet with five fingers and toes. A fractal is a pattern, and that's the potter's shape. The devil made a term called so extra because the fallen angels made children that had extra pinkies and toes, a demonic pattern of rebellion that deviates from God's creation. God made creation in patterns and symbols, and he made creation in six days and rested on the seventh. According to science, some things are not practical, like forgiving people's debts every seven years uh, and a Sabbath day's rest, or even crop rotations. Even biologically, it seems counterintuitive, but when you follow God's patterns living the way he made, not the devil, he honors it with abundant harvests, and when you forgive people's debts, you gain allies in hard times. They even become more productive. This doesn't pay out immediately, but everyone benefits in the long run through reciprocation. Tell that to this wicked and adulterous generation that worships instant gratification. We might be made in God's image, but unless we learn his ways, we're an empty vessel filled with invisible fallen angels and foul spirits. Not just the hardware, this flesh, we live in, but the software that's put in that determines its function. Not just their brains, but also in spirit. Light travels faster than sound. That's why some people look bright until they open up their mouths. Like the Antichrist and false prophets saying we have to merge with AI or be taken over by it. How stupid. Now getting into some technical terms here. God's light from the sun is electromagnetism in a visible spectrum, holding things together with energy inside of God's laws of nature. Like a plant uses photosynthesis to make sugar inside of fruit, but unless it produces viable seeds, it may become useless like figs that produce empty seeds that are cultivated to produce roots from cuttings or are grafted in. Like the unrepentant synagogue of Satan Antichrist state of Israel. When fruit is eaten, our body uses this energy to move, and when we move it, creates chemical heat and friction. Infrared energy we can't see. Light in an invisible spectrum to humans, unlike the sun and stars and the moon that emits God's light into the night sky. He gives them directly. This is why the devil convinced witches to kill Christians then burn their fat in a candle using a visible wavelength of light inside of a pumpkin. Because Christ says we are like clay lamps filled with oil and you don't light a lamp to light the way and then place a basket over it to keep people from seeing. Everything is held together by God, the bright morning star including the weak and strong nuclear force and uh, holding atoms together, a higher, more concentrated wavelength of electromagnetism. But the enemy is trying to steal God's light to make something artificial. We as humans are living, moving batteries to the fallen angels that can be controlled when possessed like the movie Avatar, like their demonic Indian god of chaos named Shiva. The sky is blue, and the fallen angel stars used to be lights in the sky. Without God, they have to get their energy from outside source to affect creation indirectly. Spiritual parasites using a host to do what they want, like robots using humans, just like the movie The Matrix, inside of a web of lies and social conditioning. Magnets form when an electric current passes through it, like natural magnets are created when lightning falls into chunks of iron in the ground. Electrically charged, they point to God's throne in the center of creation, the Alpha and Omega, not a fat red man like the wicked King Eglon of Israel living in the North Pole. Santa equals Satan. 
The devil wants to trap God's light to be used for his purposes, like Thomas Edison's light bulbs and Nikola Tesla. They embody evil because Satan falling like lightning, using electricity to make artificial lights instead of using real flame, making fire shine down from heaven using rocket fuel refined from crude black oil, false signs and wonders hitting the firmament, trying to control people remotely using AI, and Elon Musk's Starlink, Psalms 19.1. Please follow the links and read the comments in the comment section below. God bless and repent.